Prepare yourself for a journey into the world of Hyrule as we venture into my stables base build. Inspired by the iconic stables from the Legend of Zelda games, this base offers survivors a sanctuary to rest and recharge, with an innkeeper's reception, cosy bedding quarters to fit a hero's slumber, a bustling crafting zone, a seating area for recounting tales, and stables to keep your trusty companions well fed. If you find yourself enjoying today's building adventure, don't hesitate to wield the power of the like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and why not subscribe? It's completely free and helps me out a ton. Now, without further ado, let's embark on an epic journey in today's video. Hello ladies and jelly spoons, and welcome back to a brand new building episode with me, Lowe's at Lance. Now, before we get started today, I just want to say a massive thank you to every single one of you, because we hit 6,000 subscribers last week. So, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate all the support that you guys give me. Now, have I got a treat for you today. We are going to be building the stables from Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Is it possible to do an arc? That is the question I'm asking myself, so that's what we are going to try today. On the map today, we are here. Latitude 62.1, Longitude 22.2. Here, amid the stunning scenery, lies a vast and flat grassy clifftop, nestled opposite the majestic redwoods. With its rocky formations adorning the landscape and access to running water, this area provides the ideal canvas for bringing my Zelda Stables base build to life. Okay, I've got my Nintendo Switch next to me with Tears of the Kingdom running, so I've got constant reference here in case I need it. Honestly, guys, I really hope that I'm able to build this build properly. Uh, I have planned about 25% of this, so I feel like it is possible. I've, I've planned 25%. Um, the other 75% I'll be making up, I'll be honest. <laughs> So, we're going to start off with a pillar. Now, the first pillar you place down, this is going to be the middle of your build. So, it's very important that you go around the area and check that you've got a nice flat area to work with. Now, I feel like this is about as flat as I can get it. I mean, over here is quite flat as well. But I'm going to I'm gonna start here. This is where I'm going to start. So, all I've done is put a pillar down like this. Bam. Now, if you are playing on a more bumpy area and you can't really get a flat area, then I'd suggest you go up a bit higher. So maybe I'd go up one, two pillars like that, if I know that terrain's really bumpy, so that at least you're going to be avoiding any of the bumps and mounds in the landscape. So starting from this pillar, we're going to be creating a giant circle around it. That's the plan. And the circle is going to be 4x4x4x4x4. Four by four by four by four by four by four. Basically, as long as you've got four walls on the outside, it is going to be the right size. Now, the method to do today's circle is very simple. I'm going to show you the easiest way to do this. So I'm going to place down triangles going around the pillar, like so. Then I'm going to place a wood ceiling on each of the sides. And then triangles in between this. And when we're building this, guys, it's very important that we're continuously putting down pillars around the build to make sure that we're always going to have foundation support. Now, the other thing is, if you have gone quite close to the ground and you've got the clearance to do it, you can just use the foundations, like so. You could just use these. Um... Honestly, just depends how close to the ground you are and if you're going to be able to get the full length of the circle this way. That's the most important thing. Okay, so from here, I'm going to show you a really easy way to get the circle to the length that you want it. So what we're going to do is every square... Oh my god, you're so loud. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, nobody saw this. It was an accident. I, I just slipped. Okay, so the super easy method is, every time there's a square, you're going to put triangles. So, there's a square here, so now there's going to be triangles. Then, every time there's triangles, you're going to put squares. And then, like we just did here, every time we have squares, we're going to put triangles. 
And then from these triangles, you're going to do squares again. So one, two, three, four. Bam. And that's one part done. So that's if you're starting with a square. You do three triangles, two squares, five triangles, three squares, seven triangles, four squares. Now that we've gone as far as we need to go from the square, we're going to do the same thing on the triangle. And it's literally just the same. So because we're starting off at a triangle, you're going to want to do a square followed by three triangles, two squares, five triangles, three squares, and then lastly, seven triangles. So literally what you've just done here, you're going to repeat the process. So you start at a triangle here, so you're going to go square, triangle, square, triangles. Here you start at a square, so you're going to go triangle, square, triangle, squares. All the way around until you complete a giant circle. So let's get this done now. And when it's all complete, you should have something that looks like this. Now something I want to point out is that uh, I did end up using some foundations because I got quite close to the ground here and it just felt like a sensible thing to do. The foundation's really good at getting rid of the grass blades that come through the top, so it is good to put them down when you can. Um, obviously, if you're playing on bumpy ground, like I said earlier, you'll probably be building quite high up anyway, so don't worry. The other thing that I wanted to point out is this brand new thin wood pillar. You guys are so loud, guys. Seriously? I actually can't today. Everyone has got to die around here. In fact, everyone die. No noises while I'm recording, please. Thank you. So they added a brand new thin wood pillar. This was actually meant to be in the Scorched Earth update <laughs> coming at the end of the month. But they accidentally put it in uh, last week's update. So we've now got these thin wood pillars. And oh my god, I didn't realize how much I needed them until now. They're actually invisible when you're putting them underneath the ceiling tiles. So I've got quite a lot of them here. And they're all invisible uh, from the top. So you can't see them. Unlike over here, you can see them all. And I feel like there's even more uses for these, which I'll show later. Right, now that we've got the platform down, let's start to put in the walls. So to do this, we're going to start off with one wall each side. Followed by a reverse wall that side, a reverse wall this side, another one, and another one. So we're going up three in total. And then we're going to get our wood sloped wall and place one on either side of this to make a little arch. And then we're literally going to repeat this on every single side. Every single side, guys. This is going to be the same pattern across the entire thing. So go ahead and do that now, and I'll be back in a second. And if you've done that all correctly, you should have something that looks like this. Now, from here, very simple, because wherever there's triangles below here, we're going to do triangles above. And everywhere there's squares here, we're going to do a normal roof. So there's triangles here, so we're going to do triangles above. Now, I'm not going to use this side of the roof. I'm actually going to use the reverse. So I'm going to use the reverse all the way around like this. So that will be the triangle side. And then for the square side, we're going to use the normal wood roof. So again, we're just going to do that all the way around. And again, you should have something that looks like this. Now from here, wherever there's a normal wood roof, so like these square ones, not the triangles, we're going to put a reverse side wooden ramp. So not this side, but the blue side, that side. That's the side we want. And each time we're going to miss out on the triangles, we're literally just doing the standard roof. So it should look like this. And then from here, we're going to use the standard wood roof again on the ramps. Perfect. And then in between, we're going to use the triangles. So in between these bits up here, triangles all the way around. 
lovely. So now it looks like this. So now we're going to go back to the wooden ramp. And at the top here, we're actually going to wherever there's squares again. So the normal square roof, not the triangles. We are going to put a wooden ramp, not going up, but going down like this. Uh, amazing. So while we're using the wooden ramp, we better as well put in this next part. So above the wooden walls here, we're going to put a wooden ramp going up like this all the way around right, so i did the underside of the ramp this side on this side i might do the other side so oops i might do this side and then keep alternating all the way around let's do that now so with all the ramps in it should look like this now, of course, the main feature of this Zelda build is the giant horse that stems up from the middle of the tent. <laughs> so, yeah, I need to work out how to do this. Now, my first thoughts are is I'm going to go up 10 pillars from the middle. So this is the middle of the build that we marked at the beginning right here. So from the middle, we're going to go up by 10. So one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's how high I'm going to have it. I just wanted to put that in now so that I have reference uh, while we continue the rest of the build. I want to make sure that that's going to be high enough. I think it is. I think 10 is going to be good. Now, because a lot of you are going to be building this in survival, it might be an idea now just to put the ceiling in. So above here, this is where we're going to put the ceiling in. And I believe this is all going to be done with triangles. So this is literally just all triangles all the way across the ceiling. Let's try it now. Ta-da! So yeah, that's it with the ceiling all in, and I believe that is going to be the best height. So it was 10 from the bottom to the top with the pillars. So I've literally just got off my Switch. I've just been on Tears of the Kingdom looking at the stables in-game, and the thing that's giving me the most anxiety right now is this damn horse head that's going to sit on top of the tent. So honestly, I think this is going to be the next stage of the tutorial because if I get this done now and nail it, I I'll feel a lot more comfortable for the rest of the tutorial. So I have four choices here. I have four choices of which way the horse head is going to look. It's either going to look this way. So pointing that way, pointing that way, pointing this way or pointing this way. So in the Zelda game, wherever the horse's face is facing, so say it was facing this way, is where the shopkeeper is. That's where his little stool is in the game. So I think I want to keep that the same. So if I had it pointing this way, it wouldn't make much sense because it's literally pointing off a cliff, although it would look pretty cool. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have it facing this way, and I'm going to do the whole horse head, and I can always change my mind later and change it to a different direction. So because I want the horse head facing this way, I'm going to put my ceiling tiles pointing this way. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four in total going out, and then the same next to this. So either side of the pillar, there'll be four going out. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do one of the sides now, and it's just going to literally repeat on the other side. So we're going to start off with a sloped wall at the end, followed by one, two, three walls, followed by a sloped wall going up, and again, and again. And then from here, we're going to reverse the angle, so it's going to go up to the right now. Then we're going to put a wall in, followed by a sloped wall, and then we're going to put a wall in here and a sloped wall in here and then just fill in that gap with another sloped wall and that is gonna be our horse shape it kind of looks like a shoe <laughs> kind of looks like a shoe right now but i think i can make this work so everything you've just done here you're gonna repeat on the opposite side okay now we're going to be using the roof block so let's get the roof out there it is 
Again, I think I'm going to use the reverse side. I might change my mind later, but it doesn't really matter. One side or the other. And then from here, we're actually going to use the ramp. So a ramp either side. Followed by stairs coming off the ramp. So it should look like this. Now I'm going to go around the back here. And I'm going to put two sets of stairs at the back. Followed by a ramp. Perfect. And then from here, I believe if I get a roof piece out, this should fit perfectly in there. And I don't know about you guys, but to my eyes, this is starting to take the shape of some sort of horse head. All it really needs is a set of ears on the top. So let's put the ears in at the top. There we go. It kind of looks like a horse now with the ears in. So it is missing a little bit of a mouth at the bottom. So I'm thinking I can create a mouth using the quarter walls. So if I go down by a quarter wall around here. And then if I use the quarter ceiling tiles. We can create a little mouth at the bottom. Oh my god that looks awesome. Kind of needs fixing coming back here though. So let's add in some more quarter walls going from here maybe to the back uh maybe not to the back maybe only like i don't know one two three four yeah about there should be fine so again one two three four now we've got this giant gap going around the horse and I'm fine with the gap but I think I want to just ease the gap off a little bit by using some railings. So if I use a railing like this going up, I think that looks pretty good and the same on the other side. Okay, well it's looking pretty good but at the moment it's looking like one of those old... <laughs> Those uh, toy horses what little kids ride around on with the pole and the and the horse head. That's what it kind of looks like right now. Yeah, so I think we're going to use the wood triangle roof to put in the neck here. So with the quarter walls, we did one, two, three, four. Um, at the end here, I think that's where we're going to put in our first triangle. So right there. And then we'll continue with another. And then rather than continuing on, we're going to kind of bend it round. So it's going to go around this way. Like so. And then you're going to want to do the same on the opposite side. Perfect. I don't think we're going to be able to connect this up. but So there'll be a little gap. But I'm fine with a little gap. That's absolutely fine by my books. And I've just seen that I've completely missed the back of the head here. So for the back of the head, I think I'm actually going to use the stairs. I think this could be cooler to use the stairs like that. Okay, so coming back to the neck here. Now, I could keep going down with the roof, but I think that's going to be too slanted with me. I need it to come down and then out again. So if we put in a sideways pillar along the lining of the roof we just put in, and then from here, we're going to be able to add in some walls. And then I think from here, that's where we're going to add in our roof tiles. Now, I think I'm going to mix it up a little bit. In some places, I'm going to put stairs. In some places, I might put a roof tile back. Maybe stairs again here. I might even fill in some of the gaps here with some triangles. So maybe one there. Maybe I'll put one in here. And one here maybe on the side. I want it to be a little bit messy. I don't want it to be perfect. So do allow yourself to let it be messy. It doesn't need to be perfect. I think we're going to put in a wall just here. So one here and here. And that will be the start of the front of the neck. So maybe stairs next. Then maybe more wool. And lastly, uh, a ramp. Honestly, I'm making this up as I go along, but it's, it's working out. It is working out. I didn't make this bit up. I did plan the horse head, um, but the neck I didn't plan. So yeah, that looks okay. Kind of looks like he's got a bit of a bib on. 
so maybe if we bring this uh, roof here around a tiny bit more. And then maybe we bring this around a little bit more. I think that works. And I don't want this to be exactly symmetrical. I want it to be messy. So rather than continuing the same pattern on the other side, maybe I don't go the extra roof tile here. And I just continue around this way instead. So maybe like this. Something like this. Okay, I'm fairly happy with this. Uh, it looks a little bit messy. I might just fill it in the bottom of the mouth here with ceiling tiles. So with this block here going all the way in like so. Okay, I think uh, the horse head's looking pretty good, if I'm honest. I'm, I'm happy with it, but there is something I'm really not happy about right now. And that is that the horse head is like perfectly sideways, perpendicular. Is perpendicular the word? Parallel to the cliff face. So the cliff is like this, and the head is also like this. And it's very unesthetically pleasing it would be a lot nicer if the horse head was facing diagonal like this so here's what i'm gonna do and i know this is gonna sound crazy but you guys have seen how to do the horse head you've got that tutorial done um all i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna find a way to move the pillar slightly to the left so it's facing this way i'm gonna put the horse head back on top of it is that nuts am i crazy just so that it's facing a little bit differently I mean the other option, the easy I mean the easier option is that I have the horse head facing this way. Which honestly actually makes a lot more sense. This is probably what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Why did I do this to start with? Oh no. Oh Lance. See, if you're following this tutorial, your horse head's probably facing a completely different direction. It honestly doesn't matter where it faces. It's just my brain. My brain is hating the fact that it's facing that way right now. So I'm going to go away and quickly fix this and I'll be right back. And I'm back. Oh goodness me, you would not believe the amount of stuff I've been doing. <laughs> so the horse head is now facing this way. But I literally tried every single way. So originally it was facing that way, wasn't it? Then I faced it this way. Um, I didn't like it. Then I faced it this way. I of course didn't like it because I have the same issue I had with it facing that way. And now I've gone for it facing this way. And this is the way I'm going to stick with now. <laughs> this is the final result. And don't worry guys, it's literally the same as it was. It's just facing another direction, which is that way. It's facing that way, which I prefer. So now that I finally figured out which way this horse head is facing, uh, we now know where the front of the build is, which is here. Which also means we know that the storefront is going to be in this door here. Just like in the games, where the horse head's usually facing in the direction where the storefront is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of the ramps we put in at the top here. And I'm going to replace these with wooden roofs going across like that. And then on top of the roof here, we're going to put some quarter walls going across, but not all the way to the end. Just like this. We're going to put skinny pillars. One here. One here. One here. Uh, one here. And lastly, one right there. Then we're going to get our railings. And from the outside pillar, we're going to try and get it to go up diagonally like this. And then go across. And then diagonally on the other side as well. Lovely. And then in the middle here, we're going to get the railing to go diagonally down. Like this. And on the other side. And you should have something that looks like this. And you should be able to delete these beams on the end if you'd like. I think I do want to delete these ones. So what we just did at the top here is what you're going to do on this one. And on this one here, either side of it. And if you've done that all correctly, it should look like this. Now, you might have noticed that the join of the walls here, I've added in a line of pillars. 
and we're actually going to do this across the entire build. So wherever there's a corner bit where the walls meet, we're going to put a line of pillars like that. So let's add these all in now going around the entire build. There we go, the pillars are all in. So now I'm thinking we better as well work on the storefront here. And then I think we're going to fill in all of these windows here with something. So we'll do that after, but let's work on this storefront first. So for the storefront, I'm thinking I want a little bit of a decking in front of the storefront. So let's add this in with some stairs, of course. Now, at the front of the door here, I think I'm going to use the new skinny pillar to cover up the little nubs on the side of the walls here then using that skinny pillar we've just put in we should be able to put in a quarter wall on this side and on this side and then if we get our skinny pillar again and we put one on the end of the quarter wall here and here and then we can add in our quarter walls on this pillar hopefully to go across like so and then all we need to do is add in our quarter ceilings going across like this. So far, so good. That looks pretty decent. I'm thinking we can add a little bit more detail here by getting the railings out and putting some across the top like that. And it'd be really cool if we could have some sort of curtains either side, which I think we can emulate with a flag. Let's see if we can get this to work. So I think to do this, we're actually going to need to put a sideways pillar in on either side. And then we should be able to put a flag on top of this beam like this. And then one directly below it. And the same on the other side. Hey, I mean, it kind of looks like curtains, am I right? That kind of works. Okay, well that's the storefront done. I think with the two other doors either side of this, we're going to put the skinny pillars in. Nice, and that just neatens them up a bit. So those are going to be open doors. That's how you're going to get in and out of this tent. So with this side, I'm thinking I'm going to add in windows here rather than just block them off because the sun rises over there and sets over here somewhere. So this is where we're going to get the most light in. So with that in mind, let's start off by putting some skinny pillars in. Then similar to what we did over there, we're going to put in some quarter walls going all the way up this time to about there. And the same on the other side. Then skinny pillars either side. Then using the skinny pillars, you should be able to put the wall across if I can get the right snap. Like this. Then using some stairs, I'm going to put them up there like this and like this. And then finally, I'm just going to fill this all the way up with railings. So that's our window design. And I'm going to repeat that on this one. So one, two, three in total. So these three here, let's repeat the design. And when those are in, it should look something like this. Now, I have actually gone a little bit too far. So I ended up going one, two, three, four, four in total. Uh, <laughs> but I actually wanted to keep this as a door. But now it's uh, now it's closed off. So maybe this is going to be our only door on the back. Just one, which I'm fine with. So now we're going to do a completely different design for the other side. So this is the back door here. So from the back door... We're going to go one, two, three, four across and leave out this one uh, because this is the door. We get in and out this way. So just to show you what we're doing again, you need to put skinny pillars either side of the wall. And then we're going to use quarter walls going all the way to the top like that. And on the other side as well, skinny pillars again on either side. And then we're going to use a full wall here going across and that's going to go to the top a sloped wall either side like that and finally a roof tile on the very top from the outside it looks like this so you're going to repeat this design on one two three in total 
and when you've added them all in it should look like this now honestly it's really up to you what uh doors you fill in and what doors you don't this is what i've gone with just based on where the sun's going <laughs> So now I'm actually thinking I'm going to go back to the roof details because there's something on the Zelda build that I really want to try and emulate. There's bunting coming down from the horse to the tent. Uh, I really want to try and recreate this. And I think the best way to do this is, so this is the front of the build here. Let's put in a pillar here and here, as well as here and here. And then let's see if we can use the railings to emulate some bunting. So I want this to go really high up like this. Then maybe a slight slant and then a bigger slant going up. Uh, I mean, it kind of works from this angle. It looks pretty good. It kind of looks like it. So let's put it in on the other side. Nice, and I don't know if it would look good if we do it on this one as well. Let's see. I mean, yeah, it kind of looks like it. Kind of doesn't. It kind of works. Kind of doesn't. I think if we maybe do it on this side as well... Nice, and we repeat that same thing on this side. Okay, I'm liking that. Now, will it work on the back as well? Oh, yeah, look at it from this angle. It does actually kind of look like bunting from this angle. I love it. Well, now that we've sorted out that bunting situation, <laughs> let's continue with the railings because we've got these big open gaps here, which we are going to keep open. But I think we're just going to line these with some railings like this. So you're going to do that across all of them going around the entire build. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you in a second. Okay, those are all in and that looks a lot better in my opinion. But what isn't looking so good is the top of the ramps here. So I'm going to do something similar to this, but a bit more plain for the rest of them. So all we're going to do here is use the quarter walls again. And we're going to use the skinny pillars like so on either side. And we're going to put one in the middle as well. And that is it. That is the design, guys. So we need to replicate that on every single side now. So I'm going to go away and do that. And I'll see you in a second. Okay, those are all in and looking absolutely fine. I did end up doing the same design we did for the front door on the back door here. So just keep that in mind. So this build is really starting to take shape now. But there is one crucial thing that we are missing down below here. And that thing is some horse stables. Of course we need some horse stables. This is what the whole build is about. So let's put some in. So to do this, I'm going to pick a side that's quite nice and flat. I'm actually going to use this window side here. And I'm going to start off by placing down some stairs going across like this. Followed by some upside down ceiling tiles. And then, of course, we're going to need some pillar support going down. And then to finish it off, we're going to put some ramps in going across the lining like so. Lovely. That looks pretty good. We've got quite a nice natural sort of shape to that. So we just need to include some more pillars going down. And on this side. And then I think I'm going to put some railings going across the top like this. And across the bottom of this, I'm actually going to use some quarter walls. So let's see if these can go in nicely. Just like that. So everything you've just done on this side, you just need to do on this side as well. So with that stable in, there's just one more thing I want to do to the exterior here. 
and that is to add a little tiny sort of pinwheel in on the outside here and I feel like this is now durable now that we've got these skinny pillars so I'm going to go up by two then using the railings we should be able to get all of these going around like a bit of a windmill Amazing. I'm so glad that this is in the game now. Actually, let's add a skinny pillar on top. Now, that's it. That's the one. That honestly looks so good. I love that. And I think I'm probably going to do the same thing on this side somewhere. There we go, we got another one on this side, and yeah, I love those, those are so cool. So with that, I feel like the exterior is pretty much done, so we can now move on to the interior. Now, with the interior, I really want to try and recreate the Zelda tent as best as I can on the inside. And looking on my Switch right now, uh, this shopkeeper, so the shopkeeper stands here, but his shop actually comes back into the tent here. It goes all the way back here somewhere. So we need to add that in. There's also going to be beds around here somewhere. So I think these could be bedrooms right here. And then on this side, I think we can include all our crafting stuff that we need. Such as the fabricator, chemistry bench, all the good stuff. Obviously, my tent is like 10 times bigger than the Zelda tent in the game. But... That is why this is going to be the perfect base. So there's a few ways I could do this. I could do it with storage boxes, but I think because of the scale of the build, I'm actually going to use the quarter walls. So we're going to come out one, two, three, four, five, six in total. And the same again on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we are going to get our quarter ceiling and go around the rim of this. Nice. Okay, I'm going to put a skinny pillar either side like so. Now, I really wish there was a way I could kind of curve this around. And I guess we possibly could if we use the snap points on the floor like this. I mean, it kind of curves around like that. Then I think I want to add more pillars up. And then I think we could go around the entire top part here with some thick pillars. So it should look like this, and I do think this works, but I think I want to add a bit more detail here. So I might go around the lining of this with some quarter walls. And possibly some railings across the top. Nice, that looks pretty good. I think I just want to add a few more little pillars in going across like this. And we really should include the ceiling tiles coming around. Now this is a bit annoying that I can't get this to look perfectly round here. Unless, I get rid of that one. Maybe I could put one like this huh and then obviously that one would have to go well it kind of works kind of doesn't i think we're gonna leave it like that though okay i've just been busy designing these beds like they have in the zelda tents um this is the design i'm gonna show you how to make it now and then it's you can literally repeat it on the different areas that you want to have the beds that's the idea. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually delete these walls here. You need to get rid of them. Then in its place, we're going to place in some quarter walls. 
like so. And then we're able to place in these pillars. So we want to put a pillar here, a pillar here, a pillar in the middle going all the way up. And you better as well just continue the pillars all the way to the top like that so it looks pretty. Right, so the reason I've done this is so that we can put in our quarter walls coming off these pillars. Now unfortunately it doesn't want to snap to this right now. But if we just simply delete this wall here and this wall here now. We should be able to place it in. And the same on the other side. If we delete those, the pillars stay in place. And you should be able to place your quarter wall. Then you simply put back the quarter walls that you deleted. There we go. Now I am going to come out by one, two, three in total. I'm going to place another pillar either side here. And then off those pillars, we're going to place in our walls. Then we just simply fill in the top here. So at the back, I'm going to place these storage boxes that are kind of like the giant pillows of the bed. Then I'm going to place our actual bed right here. Uh, like so. Then I'm going to place in a canvas dead in the center here. And then I'm going to place that all around the bed like so. Then I'm going to do two storage boxes at the end of the bed. Some stairs so you can get up to the bed. Then we're going to do two pillars going up from the quarter walls here. Then we're going to get our wooden ramp here and try and get it to come this way like so and then finish it off with some quarter ceiling tiles like so so that is how you do the bed so you can literally repeat this design however many times you want and you could even do like little variations of this by adding in maybe some carpet maybe you put some bigger storage boxes here or a furnace uh yeah that's how you do that so for the rest of this guys, I think I'm going to go into super fast build mode and work out what the hell I'm going to do here. Because <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I know that we're going to do all our crafting stuff on this side, so I'll probably do that now.
Okay, super fast build mode over. And as you can see, I haven't actually put too much in in the way of crafting. I'm trying to keep to the Zelda theme because I really want it to be like you come in, you pay the innkeeper, you can either rest here for the night or you can have something to drink over here or eat. I think that's the vibe I'm going for. Which means I've still got a lot of open space, which I don't know what to do with. But I think anything else I do do on the inside now, I'm going to do off camera. And we'll do a nice base tour at the end where I'll go through every little detail. And yeah, the exterior as well, it's looking pretty good. I think there's like some tiny stuff that I'm going to do to the exterior. Nothing major. I might just add like a little bit of a decking around this side. And I'm probably, let me just get my flags out. I am probably going to add in loads of flags going around this build because obviously it is a tent but I'm not able to use fabric really in this game but what we can do is add in some flags so if I add in a flag here yes like this and I'll probably do that along the rest of the build if I'm honest I'm probably going to add flags just like I did there on this side, this side, all the way around. And I could even add in flags maybe here as well. Uh, oh, I know a solution. You just need to put in a beam at the bottom here. Take it all the way across. And then it should allow you to place in a flag like so. And like so. Yes. Okay, I'm probably going to do that as well along the whole build. So I'll have flags here. Flags here. I probably... How many flags am I allowed? I am allowed 150 and there's already 78 in the area apparently. So yeah, I'm probably going to use up all the flag allocation I have on this. And the only other detail I might do off camera is probably some painting. I don't know how crazy I'm going to go with the painting yet. Definitely the flags um, and maybe these little pinwheels. I'm going to experiment with the painting. It's such a process trying to get the right paint and make it look good with the paint. So that's why I'm doing it off camera. But then I can talk about it when it's all complete and show you exactly what I've done and where I've done it. So you guys know. So yes, let me go away now, do all the final touches on it. And I'll see you after the cinematic shots. In the name of Hyrule, I shall slay this beast with just my bow. I missed. Completely missed. Oh, he's charging up. Oh, is he high level? I thought this would kill him quicker than this, I'll be honest. Okay. Everyone calm down. Everyone calm down. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Okay. Not good. It's over. I have the high ground. You shall now perish into nothingness oh don't run away come back here lady lady i am not done with you oh yeah you charge up charge up all you like you hear rock i slayed the beast well now for the base door let's walk on over to the stables build and i have to say i'm pretty pleased with how this build turned out now, there's a few things that I did do off camera that I'll go through now. Nothing major. Well, a few things major, but nothing too major. The first thing you're going to notice is all the flags. I did mention that I was going to put all these in. I literally just went around the build and added all the flags. I actually added so many flags that I reached the flag limit. 
which I've never done before. So because uh, the Zelda build is a 10, I felt like this was the best way to get a bit of fabric on the build. I've also gone for a pastel blue, pastel red color theme, mainly because the 10 in the Zelda game actually uses very similar colors to this all over their tent. And guys, just so you know the exact colors that I use, just in case you want to do the exact same color scheme, I used a blue color called Moonstone and a reddish pink color called Edocha. Coming around, we have the stables. Now, I did change. I took out the quarter walls we put in and replaced it for these trowels. So it looks like the horses are eating. I, I thought that was quite a fun little detail. I also decided to paint the awning red. I think that's a nice additional detail. I also discovered that the small crop pots all fit perfectly in these little nooks in the windows. So really nice detail to add if you're looking for a little bit of greenery on the build. Coming over to the back of the build, as you can see, there are flags absolutely everywhere. I really like the side of the build, actually. Other than the horse head not facing this way, I think it's a really pretty side. Here's the only major addition that I added off camera, and that is the decking. Let me get off my horse and show you around the decking. So the decking I've taken out by one, two, three, four tiles in total, and it's super easy to put in yourselves. I literally just took it from the back door here, all the way around scoop 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 all the way around to the front door here and on the decking i just added a bit of decor like war drums training dummies crop pots uh we got a lovely wandering traveler here just chilling out i also heard a rumor if you hit a bullseye on this a cork appears I also did a awning, similar to the stables around the back that we did. It's just the same, uh, even coloured it red, and I added a load of storage underneath. I think this just adds a nice little touch to the entire build, so I'm really happy I added that in. <laughs> so yeah, this, uh, this decking was the only major thing that I added to the actual build. Scooching on up to the horse's head here, I just want to point out that I ended up putting some furnaces in its mouth <laughs> just to get some smoke coming out of his nostrils. Now, in the Zelda game, I don't know if anyone's played it, but um, the giant horse head on top of the stables has loads of smoke coming out of its mouth. Um, so I wanted to emulate that somehow, but unfortunately, I couldn't get it coming out of its mouth. So it's had to be the... <laughs> nostrils which actually looks kind of cool from a distance i actually really like this the other thing that i've done here is i added some paint to the railings here to make it look more like bunting i think this actually does a pretty good job of sort of tricking you into thinking that it is bunting even though they're railings i think that works pretty well i also think i added just a few more pillars going around the side of his face on either side and i added like little details like adding in a little rope ladder here and i think i did that in a few places yeah i added rope ladder there and even rope ladder here on the side now, I could have gone a little bit crazier with the paint job here, but what I found was when you paint on the wood, the colours are just a little bit too strong. Like here, this colour is really nice. It's like a nice muted red. But when you paint that same red on the wood, it turns out really dark. Like, I think this is it here. It goes really dark, and it was just a little bit too much for my eyes. It started to look a bit messy. So I really just opted for the less is more strategy, and I think that's paid off overall. I think this works as a whole. So coming on to the front of the stables here, we have our stables manager here who will take our money and look after all our horses in his stables. I really love the addition of the flags here, making it look like the curtains. Uh, I think that works really well. So if we come on round here, we can go inside this giant tent and we're met by a little shop front here where we have another manager who's ready to take our money so that we can sleep in his comfortable establishment. Now because I ran out of flags I decided to use wall mounts in places to add a bit more colour so I added these in going around the entire shop front here and of course I did the old lance canvas trick that you will know from my other videos that I do quite a lot to make it look like there's a rug on the floor. I painted this one red just to go with the colour theme that I've got going everywhere. Now if we come to our left here, we will be met by the crafting zone. 
Now, as I said earlier, I think, um, I decided to keep this whole build as Zelda themed as possible. I wanted to keep it as close to the 10 in that game as possible. So I opted for quite a small crafting zone here because there isn't really anything like this in the 10. But, you know, I've taken some creative liberties here. We've even got a nice little cooking area over here where we got a traveler hard at work cooking his meal. And coming from this, we have a little seating area here. In fact, we've got seating areas around the whole build. But this one's especially cute because it's all painted in. And yeah, it looks nice. So as I said, we've got seating area all around the build. We've got this nice little central bench area with plants. That works really nicely. Also, I've just realized they've changed. This is Severu. Yeah, they've changed the look of the Severu. This is completely different to how it looked before. That must have changed in the new patch, and I actually quite like it. I like the color of it. It's a nice green color. I did like the old one as well, though, but that still looks good. I really like that. You might have also noticed that there's some rope ladders dangling from the ceiling. That's just to add a little bit more detail to the entire build and fill out the space. I think it works really nicely in here. And my favorite part of the interior is actually the bedding area because it's really very close to what they have in the Zelda game. They've got these beds. I think they've got three in total going around and they're all double beds and they all have awnings going over them. Uh, mine are obviously a lot bigger. Now, I painted all of these different colors. So I painted this bed yellow, I did this one blue, and I did this one red. I also used rope ladders as sort of like netting around the bed. I think works really well. I'm really pleased with how this looks. And yes, I do have a lot of boss heads in these mounts, and I know <laughs> this would be very hard to do an official because it would mean you'd have to go kill the bosses a million times. But hey, you could have one of each in different places around the build and it would still look really nice. Now I have done this build completely in vanilla arc, meaning there's no mods at all. And I do wonder if I did use mods, I wonder how this would have turned out instead. Would this have looked more like the Zelda build? Or would it have looked exactly the same? I don't know, honestly. Maybe I could have done a better job with mods. I don't know. Honestly, I really enjoy having the challenge of trying to build it on Standard Arc. And it also means that you guys can go ahead and try and build this on your official servers with no issues. And well, guys, that is it. I had a load of fun making this build for you guys today. I really want to try and do a few more like this where I try and build things from different games. I think that could be really fun. I, I have a few ideas already about that. So do make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on those future builds. And if you enjoyed today's video, guys, don't forget to smash the like button. Comment down below if you think I did a good job with this one. And why not subscribe? As I just said, it's completely free and it will help me out a ton. Love you guys to death and I'll see you in the next video.